Tasters. Uh, today I have a, my special guest is Mark Zambron. Mark, thank you for being with me here today. Absolutely, Christian. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Uh, be a good uh, chance to taste a few meads from uh, across our, our nation here. That's right. It's uh, my pleasure to have him. He is a certified BJCP beer and mead judge. So uh, it's great to have him and his expertise to be able to talk about these meads today. And uh, so these meads are from Hierophant Meadery in, of all places, Mead, Washington. So Washington State, the city is Mead, and uh, Hierophant is run by Jeremy and Michelle Kinsel. And you can see them at HierophantMeadery.com. And I encourage you to go there, check out their website, check out all their meads. They have a, a, a large display of meads that they specialize in methaglins and botanicals. So they are herbalists, uh, and because of that, they have a love for plants and, and different botanicals that they utilize in their meads. So we encourage you to go there and check out, check them out. Now this is part one of three because we do have six of their meads, so we're going to just taste two for this session here, and then uh, we'll do two more for part two and. Two more for part three and I do encourage you I am going to have an interview with uh, Jeremy and Michelle uh, after these videos come out so that uh, if you listen to that podcast you'll be able to uh, get the scoop more on them and the meadery itself so right now we're gonna be tasting a session mead it's called Pacific Northwest Chai okay and this comes in at 5.5% ABV, and it's a carbonated honey wine with chai spices, botanicals, and Pacific Northwest mushrooms added. Uh, according to the website, uh, the mushrooms are reishi, and just uh, let you read what they say: reishi mushrooms, local botanicals, and masala chai and it's carbonated and that's a special winter treat so uh, we're going to taste that one and we're also going to taste the Mazer gold uh, gold medal winning Hawthorne Tulsi mead and uh, the Hawthorne Tulsi mead won gold like I said at the Mazer Cup International in 2016 so um, Hierophant uh, is has a very strong reputation in the mead community, and uh, it's uh, our pleasure to be able to taste these meads today and promote good mead to everyone out there, and as well as have fun tasting these these meads. So. Absolutely, Christian. I I, I think uh, we ordered them in a way to start with the uh, the the lightest um, uh, hydromel, really a, a mead that you can drink, perhaps a, a larger volume, uh, before running into trouble. Uh, but uh, this one, uh, it, it sounds like it, it's going to meet the description very nicely. Uh, so we'll pour a little and get started. Yeah, All absolutely. right, let's do it. I should say uh, Mark is a, a, a BJCP certified judge, uh, me judge, and, and uh, beer judge here in Western New York. And uh, he runs the classes here, uh, what do you call a proctor? Um, I wouldn't even say that. I just we, we have uh, hopes of getting a few more mead judges in the Western New York area, uh, with one day uh, perhaps even planning a, a mead only competition in in the Buffalo or Western New York vicinity. Um, but yeah, I think running classes is great. It helps us to learn to better evaluate meads. Uh, and I was telling Christian before we got started that uh, you know there's one thing that you can do to uh, to enjoy a mead. Uh, and it's a little different when you evaluate because evaluation really means uh, you're, you're trying to pick apart the components and, and find uh, both the good and possibly bad things within a mead. But uh, when you're enjoying a mead, it really is more about the, the, the overall feel uh, after you, you, you start to take a sip or two. 
Um, but we're gonna we're gonna probably do some evaluation here. I think is the plan. Yeah, absolutely. So, what, so uh, right off the bat, uh, the appearance. What do you what do you have to say about the appearance on this mead? Well, it's uh, quite clear, uh, just shy of brilliant. It has a nice uh, deep gold color to it. Uh, it has a, a rim of, of uh, very tiny bubbles. Uh, when we first poured it, uh, it came out with a, a fairly decent amount of uh, a head um, that settled to a rim that, that's persistent. Uh, there are a few larger bubbles underneath it, um, but the, the head itself or the, the bubbles are just this little off-white color collar that rims the glass. Uh, when I tilt it, you know, I can see a pretty uh, uniform meniscus and uh, off the light, it has pretty good reflectance too. So I, I can see, you know, it, it, it's like a mirror and that's a, a, a indicator of a higher quality meat is when you can get that, uh, that reflection off the surface. Um, so, and when we swirl it, uh, th there are really not much in the way of legs. It recedes quickly. The only thing kind of left hanging up on the glass are the bubbles themselves. Uh, so again, this isn't expected in a you know 5.5% mead. You're not going to get much in the way of alcohol legs uh, on the appearance. So, and the um, typically what I do next is I, I pick up on the aroma. I try to bring the glass close to my nose very slowly. I actually want to get some of the heavier aromatics later. You want to get the light stuff that's at a distance from the nose, and you can swirl to help uh, emanate some of the aromatics from the glass and just light sniffs moving up to the glass itself a little more and then looking for the heavier aromatics by going into the glass and longer sniffs so I'm getting um, some cinnamon and almost like a raisin uh, on the aroma so and it's nicely brought up by the carbonation it's actually pretty easy to get a, a, a good amount of, of the bouquet up there. Yeah, I'd say it's very easy. Yeah. So, uh, and, and this may be all reflective of, uh, of, of the chai that's in there. I, I, I often kind of, uh, when I've had chai and in, in, in tea or other drinks, it's usually been a, um, a raisiny cinnamon mixture. I can't really pick up too much of the honey in the aroma. You know, but you can actually kind of uh, uh, attribute some sweetness in the aroma to what, what you're going to get in the taste uh, by, by the, the, the smell itself. No, that could come from the honey, correct? Even yeah. Even though it, yeah. it's not perceived as a honey uh, right, it's, aroma, it, yeah. but there's sweetness. Yeah, and it, it's not a, a super distinct honey type sweetness that, that you get on the nose. It's very light. Well, definitely um, a cinnamon raisin, mm -hmm. cinnamon raisiny flavor comes through. Yeah, I, I get the same, and it followed with the what the nose told me. Um, the honey may be a little grassy. Um, it's sort of like reminiscent of like an alfalfa or a clover honey, um, you know. But that's about as all I, I can can make out of the honey sweetness. It's there certainly. Um, yeah, and it's uh, the honey. Uh, there's no varietal that's declared on the bottle, so assuming it's a it's a Pacific Northwest, uh, you have to assume it's a wildflower if mm. they don't specifically say. But right. um, do they they have a lot of alfalfa in that area? I believe. I, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I, it it uh, it's certainly a light and and not a dominating type of honey. Uh, it um, I think that's great for something that is uh, uh, primarily a methaglin. Uh, really, the, the, the honey is almost going to act as sort of your, your backdrop uh, for, for the spicing, and I think it does. I'm not really picking up much uh, mushroom character. It, it, it may just be, a, again, sort of a, a backdrop note or a supportive uh, a characteristic. Um, you know, I think the carbonation really works well. Uh, with uh, hydromels in general, and I think this one it, it, it particularly does. It, it really does allow the the aroma to to flourish, uh, and it, it also adds a bit to the mouthfeel. 
Uh, and a little bit of uh, carbonation adds acidity too that brings uh, the rest of it into balance mm -hmm. uh, with, with that, that lighter honey sweetness. Um, so I, I think they, uh, it's a well formulated mead. Um, it's uh, uh, delightful to have and you can, again, this is five, five and a half percent so you can drink, you know, 12 ounces of it and still have another. Uh, the, um, uh, the mouthfeel does, it, it sort of finishes a off dry uh, and I think the, the carbonation helps to, to make it distinct in the finish. Um, so it's a lovely meat. I think this is something that you can have at the beginning of a party. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't get, the mushroom definitely doesn't jump out at you, mm -hmm. smack you in the face for sure, but <clears throat> maybe there's maybe a hint of earthiness that might be there that that could be that would in my mind that would be where the mushroom would be and, and like you said uh kind of a supporting character mm -hmm. um you know in the background there yeah. so okay all right so we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll try the hawthorne tulsi okay and so we're back now we're going to taste the hawthorne tulsi uh, Methaglin Mead, which uh, I'll just mention real quick again that uh, Hierophant Meadery specializes in Methaglin Meads. Uh, being plant people, uh, they like to use plants and Methaglins are herbs and spices in, in mead. So um, this again, like I said, was a Mazer Cup International Gold uh, winner in 2016. And this one is 12% uh, ABV, so it's more of a wine style than the session that we just had. And uh, we'll go ahead and pour it. All right, I'm and, looking forward uh, to this one. Yeah, so. I mean, anytime uh, a Mazer Cup, for those of you who don't know what the Mazer Cup is, it's um, an international mead competition that is considered, uh, you know, the foremost prominent uh, mead competition in in the world so um, the greatest mead makers um, tend to to uh, submit their their entries to both home and uh, home mead makers and also uh, professional mead makers um, enter this competition mm -hmm. so having said that uh, let's uh, remark on the appearance yeah this is a uh, brilliant and I mean brilliant there's it's quite clear uh, there were just tiny scant number of bubbles in the pour and I think it's just related to the pour uh, but it has a nice uh, light straw color to it um, I, I think when they describe honey they would almost say it's uh, well it's not water white but it's 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 certainly a very light straw type color um, it has uh, again excellent reflectance uh, I, I can make out uh, uh, things on my ceiling and my shed here that that uh, that are really crystal clear, uh, and it has a uh, very uniform meniscus. So usually we look at the meniscus to see if there are signs of like oxidation, uh, where it will start to sort of brown at the edges, um, and I don't see anything of that sort. Uh, and then when I swirl the glass, uh, you know there are definitively legs on uh, on this mead that uh, recede, you know, uh, with, with medium acceleration, I, I would say. You know, they're, they're not uh, dropping quick nor slow. Uh, which... for, for those of, of, of the people out there that don't know what legs are, could you mm -hmm. just uh, comment on that real quick? Sure. Uh, what happens with, uh, with higher alcohol content uh, uh, beverages of any sort is if, if you um, have a nice clean glass and you swirl it and you, you uh, move the surface, uh, it actually will adhere to the glass and uh, uh, come down slowly and in fact sometimes the legs will even go backwards and rise up the glass a little bit from the alcohol and so the alcohol sort of keeps a, a, an adherence to the the, the glassware and uh, it, it'll stay and then drop slowly uh, back to the surface so we look for that and, and again any beverage that has higher alcohol content and you usually don't see it until you get somewhere around uh, seven eight nine percent uh, uh, by volume so but this clearly has some it's uh, again not a really slowly receding side of legs, just a medium, perhaps. Mm -hmm. so. so, the aroma and bouquet 
To me, I'm getting a white wine mm -hmm. off that. Yeah, uh, and I was, I was telling Christian, I just had, had uh, so, uh, uncorked some Muscat wine to blend with, a, with another beverage uh, last month. And this is reminiscent a lot of uh, like a Muscat grape uh, on the nose. I should have clarified that aroma is a grape, a grape smell. Mm -hmm. um, bouquet is something different. That's a, the combination of, of aromas that you get from um, both the, the fruits or uh, the honey, in this case, uh, honey, and if there's any fruit or whatever, any other ingredients along with the fermentation uh, process that mm -hmm. uh, the mead maker may have employed. Yeah, I'm also getting just a hint of strawberry and uh, a little bit of grassiness that I think, again, is probably the, the type of honey. Uh, so you, you, you may not smell sweetness per se, but it, it, it will come across, uh, your nose will tell you it's going to be a little sweet. And that's what I'm getting is just this little bit of grassy sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the it's flavor smooth. follows. Yeah, flavor follows. It 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 it, the, it follows the nose. The the flavor is that of like a white grape, a little bit of strawberry. Um, you know, I, I I think it also has just a, a tiny bit of spiciness. It um, yeah, maybe just a little pepper uh, is what I'm perceiving. Uh, Which that would probably come from the holy basil, otherwise known mm -hmm. as Tulsi. Um, Tulsi. Uh, whole, or holy basil it is a basil variety that is uh, native to India hmm. and it's a little bit spicier hmm. for sure so that's probably where that's coming from yeah that may be that may be what I'm getting I, I um, notice it almost like in the uh, the end of, of the uh, of the taste and um, the honey sweetness is there too again sort of a, a grassy maybe a clover type honey um, and uh, it, it has a very mild amount of acidity, uh, but I think more importantly, it has a, a, a good amount of supportive tannins. There's a, um, it, it's shy of astringent, but it, it does leave a slight uh, drying and adds a little bit of body to, uh, uh, to the mead, too. Um, but amazingly, there's not a lot of alcohol warmth. It's a very, very gentle warming. Uh, and, and honestly, I, I, I get it after after I swallow. Uh, so it is it, almost like as if it were aged two or three years. Um, it's it's a very very mild warming alcohol. Um, uh, it's very inviting. So I can understand why this won a gold. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, it's it's very well balanced. Uh, like you said, there's some acidity, but not overly acidic. Uh, there's that tannic astringency that um, you know supports uh, the backbone uh, along with the acid, mm -hmm. and uh, helps uh, balance out the the alcohol, which you know balances out so well that, <laughs> like you said, yeah, it's 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 smooth. It's very it smooth. It's beautiful to look at. I mean, yeah. it's it, it it's has a, pretty, a look of elegance. Mead. Absolutely, a pretty pretty and uh, elegance a good word, and I, I think that that. Uh, raises expectations when you bring it to the nose and the mouth and it, it met it met everyone so it's a wonderful need yeah so um i'm guessing you would recommend it uh the, yes yeah. <laughs> as so would i so uh if you are interested in tasting a mead like this uh, which won a gold medal and uh as we have described is is uh, not only beautiful to look at elegant but also delicious and well-balanced and just a, a pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. Then again, herofontmeadery.com. Uh, they do have Vino Shipper where they can ship right to your door. Uh, and uh, you can you can actually, like we're here across the country from them. Uh, we're in New York State and they're in Washington State. So, uh, and uh, but it's possible to have their mead. So uh, you just go to their website and you can order through them. Yeah, this one would substitute easily for uh, any anything you would pair food, uh, white wine. This would slip in and, and substitute for your white wine pairing for sure. Uh, you know, a fish or a chicken dish, I think it would, it would just be wonderful. Agreed. Okay, so that's it for part one. Uh, be sure to check out part two that's coming where we have two more of Hierophant's meads that we're going to taste. 
And uh, until then, uh, cheers, and thanks for joining us. Cheers.